Hi all, Andy from Solar Reviews again, and today I wanted to make a video basically how many solar panels do you need to run an electric car? I'll run through it conceptually first, and then I might give an example using a Tesla Model 3 long range electric car. And so it's really just a simple series of a few very simple maths formulas and probably only one or two sort of key pieces of information you need to know. Basically, what you do is you work out the number of miles you get per kilowatt hour. And that's a really simple thing to do. You divide effectively the range of the car by the kilowatt hours of the battery capacity. So let's say you've got a, a 350 mile range on a Tesla Model 3 long range, 82 kilowatt hour battery bank, then the miles per kilowatt hour is 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And then what you do, you need to work out the number of kilowatt hours of solar power you're gonna need each month. And that's simply the number of miles driven in a month divided by the number of miles you get per kilowatt hour. So if I assume that I drive my Tesla Model 3 long range car 1,000 miles a month, and that I get basically 4.3 miles to the kilowatt hour, then I need effectively 260 kilowatt hours a month to charge my car. And so from that, all you then really need to know is how much power does a kilowatt of solar panels produce where you live. Now the best way to do that is probably just to jump on our open calculator, which is at solarreviews.com slash solar dash calculator. It does give you a full solar estimate, but you can really ignore all the savings figures and costs, uh, cost figures and all that sort of stuff it'll give you. But what it will tell you is how many kilowatts of solar you need based on the size of your bill and the kilowatt hours of usage, but also it'll tell you how many kilowatt hours of annual production you get out of that system. So generally speaking across the country, it's between about 900 kilowatt hours per kit one kilowatt of peak solar capacity and about 1500 kilowatt hours of solar output per one kilowatt of solar capacity. So if you're talking, you know, so the 1500 would probably be Nevada, Arizona, you know, New Mexico, places like that, parts of Texas, things like that. Um, you know, the eight, 900, you know, the would be, you know, up in the Northeast probably where you know it's cloudy and very snowy and very overcast particularly in, in winter long cold winters so before you know we worked out you know the number of kilowatt hours we needed so we worked out with that example for a tesla long range had an 82 kilowatt hour you know battery and a 300 and something mile range i think 350 odd mile range we worked out that we drove the car at a thousand miles a month you know, 260 kilowatt hours. The system size needed is simply, you know, 260, you know, kilowatt hours divided by the number of kilowatts you get out of each kilowatt. So let's say we're in a area with, which is pretty typical, sort of in the middle, around 1200 kilowatt hours per year per one kilowatt of solar. The system size needed in that case is simply you know, 260 uh, kilowatt hours that we need divided by 100 kilowatt hours we get per kilowatt, which means we need 2.6 kilowatts of solar. So if we look at you know, how much that might add to the cost of a solar system with solar being about $3 a kilowatt, you know, we're talking about $7,000 as a one-off cost that can power your Tesla car for the next, you know, 25 years. But that's before tax incentives. So there's a 30% uh, solar tax credit that'll bring that cost back to about $5,000. So if you like, you know, you're looking at $5,000 as a one-off payment to run a thousand miles a month uh, and 2.6 kilowatts. Using fairly standard 400 watt panels now, you know, that's probably about an extra seven panels that you would need to add onto your system for your car. And so, you know, the long-term levelized cost of those solar panels at that price, so basically if you take the 25 year kilowatt hour production of those panels works out to about seven or eight cents at that price a kilowatt hour. So um, that's not taking into account the cost of money over time. That's sort of just a, a very simple sort of straight line calculation. But still, you know, seven cents a kilowatt hour times, 
you know, 260 kilowatt hours you need, you know, you're talking it's costing you 20 bucks a month to basically fuel your car. So pretty amazing, um, saving the planet, saving some money. It's five grand up front. You know, if you're driving a thousand miles and you're getting 20 mile to the gallon, I know, you know, if you're driving a smaller car like the Tesla Model 3, it's probably a bit better than that, but bear with me, it makes the maths easy for me. Um, so if you you would need, you know, 50 gallons of fuel at what, four bucks, a gallon, the, you know, I know it's different around the country, but about 200 bucks a month. So we're talking 20 bucks a month to run it, an electric car on solar panels versus 200 bucks a month to buy gas. You know, I hope this video has helped you work out a little bit more about how the economics stack up in, in relation to the running costs. There's, there's probably lots of other videos. Also, the, the maintenance cost on electric cars is a lot less moving parts are significantly lower. So yeah, I think you're talking it would depend on the exact model, but I think you're talking a few hundred dollars a year versus about $1,200 a year with an um, internal combustion engine car. So there's, there's some real savings there on top, on top of the savings. But I mean, from what we just worked out, $20, $240 a year versus 200 bucks a month, $2,400 a year, you know, over $2,000 a year of savings. And we worked out also that that 2.6 kilowatts of extra solar was gonna cost us about five grand. So the payback period on that infrastructure is about two years. The next 23 years, you're driving your car for, basically you're driving your car for free because it's already saved you enough to pay that five grand. So um, hope that's helped. If you've, again, the calculator's there in the description below if you wanna go through and learn some stuff yourself. That's all for now. Have a lovely day and um, we'll see you again next time. If you've liked it, please like and subscribe. Um, it gives us all a lift for making this content and um, encourages us to make more of it. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to subscribe and check out our other content.